is Sonny Bunch, movie critic for The Bulwark, the podcaster for Bulwark Goes to Hollywood and Across the Movie Aisle, the movie critic of The Hugh Hewitt Show. Hello, Sonny. Good morning. Welcome. Hey. Hey, Dwayne. How's it going? Good. So we're going to talk about Barbie in a minute because it's the biggest movie of the year. But um, I know you haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. But we got to talk a little bit about Haunted Mansion because... You've got you've got a reason why you haven't seen it yet. I've got a reason why I have to see it, and we got to talk about it a little bit and, and what the buzz is on it, and then we'll talk about other stuff. Yeah, first me. I have a miscellaneous random person who lives with me who works at the park, works at Disneyland, and the ride he's attached to currently is Haunted Mansion. So I have to see this. Uh, for, for personal interest, um, I'm going to have to see this at some point. And um, I'm really hoping this isn't the Eddie Murphy thing. And I'm just trying to get a sense from you whether we think we're seeing an Eddie Murphy version 2.0 or whether this has any more promise. Uh, well, no. I mean, I, I well, look, again, I haven't seen it. Uh, so I, I, it's hard for me to say, you know, uh, if it's worth seeing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but the reason I haven't seen it is kind of interesting because I, so my, you know, I, I've been, I've been to Disney World a couple times in the last couple of years with my family. Uh, kids have gone on the Haunted Mansion ride. One of them really likes it. The other one was a little scared by it, you know, because he's, he's a little younger. Um, and, uh, neither of them have any interest at all whatsoever in this movie. I asked, I asked them both. They were like, no, we don't want to go. And I, and I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure why, if it just looks too scary for them or if it looks too adult or what. Um, I, I don't think it's, it's not, uh, it's not like the Eddie Murphy one, uh, precisely. I don't think this is less a comedy and it's more kind of mix of horror horror and comedy you know uh, i feel like i feel like the eddie murphy one was kind of goofy comedy um with a little bit of ghost stuff in the background uh and this seems a little a little scarier uh to the extent that again my kid's not interested at all in seeing it um so i don't i mean the, the buzz is not great it's you know it's in the mid 40s on Rotten tomatoes uh it, it didn't do particularly well at the box office uh, in its opening weekend, I think it grossed only twenty five million bucks or something like that. I think it was third. It was third still behind Oppenheimer and Barbie, right? Yeah, well, Oppenheimer and Barbie are going to be, you know, Oppenheimer and Barbie are eating up a lot of the uh, the, the uh, I don't know oxygen, breathing up a lot of the oxygen. There we go, uh, and will be for a while. I think uh, those are those those are both going to have legs. Um, I mean, Barbie is doing just crazy, crazy numbers. Uh, you know, people people were like, "What is the Top Gun Maverick of uh, you know 2023 going to be in terms of just just in terms of legs at the box office, right? Something that sticks around for a long time and keeps making money." Um, and it looks like it's going to be uh, Barbie. Did you uh, see that coming with the, with the? No, I mean, I didn't either. No, I didn't. I didn't at all, and I probably should have. Frankly, I mean, this is so. It it, it is interestingly like like Top Gun Maverick, kind of uh, similar in the sense that it is a it's a nostalgia play that aims squarely at uh, an under an under exploited demographic at the movie theaters, which is basically women between the age of twenty and sixty um, who you know grew up playing with Barbies, and and specifically. I get the sense, you know, look, I, I wrote about this in my review. I didn't like the movie very much. It didn't work for me. It's just not funny. Um, uh, and I don't, I didn't, uh, I didn't find it entertaining. Um, but uh, I'm in the minority on this. So, you know, lots of, lots of folks really did like it. Um, the, uh, but the, again, the audience here, you know, look, when I, I saw the movie, uh, it didn't work for me. There were some little kids in the theater, and I don't think it really works for them either. It's not it's not a movie for them. The movie that this is for, again, is for um, young adults to older adult women um, who Mattel, you know, who is a co-producer on this. Who uh, grew up with of, Barbies. Uh, who, who grew up with Barbie and need to be reassured that it's okay to buy Barbies for their kids. I mean, this, this movie really is a two-hour, $150 million advertisement. For Barbie, and one of the reasons I find it vaguely annoying, uh, just as a movie, is that uh, the the 
the film tries to have it both ways. It tries to be both an advertisement for Barbie and a critique of the the fact that it's an advertisement for for Barbie. You know, it's very self aware. It's it's constantly winking at the audience. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, we know where we know what we're doing, and you know, we know that this is a this is a ridiculous sellout sort of thing, but we're still doing it, and you're going to have a fun time. And I just I, I find that. I find that all very off-putting. I, I dislike that a great deal. Um, I, I I much prefer if you're going to make a, a feature-length commercial for toys, just just tell a story, just do it straightforward, and don't wink and and act like you're above it all. And that's one reason why, frankly, I prefer the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that's out right now, which is a uh, it is a it's a you know it's a reboot of the series. It is designed explicitly to sell toys and again experience here with my kids i was walking through target yesterday uh with my four-year-old son and who i went to go uh, who i took to um uh the new ninja turtles movie uh and as we were walking uh, around the target he sees the toy aisle and he sees all the turtles and he goes daddy like the movie and i'm like yep exactly like the movie that's what that's why the movie exists uh, to, to sell you these toys, so that was that was kind of amusing. But again, that that movie is at least it's funny. It's funnier. Uh, it's written by uh, it's, it's uh, written by the guys who made Superbad, so they have that kind of uh, teenage, you know, uh, experience and patois down. Um, it is uh, the animation style is very interesting and good. Uh, you know, again, along alongside across the Spider Verse and um, Puss in Boots: The Last Wish, I feel like we're in a Slightly, we, we've uh, evolved a little on animation over the, over the last couple of years here, away from the um, pretty straightforward Pixar or, uh, you know, DreamWorks Illumination style, the smooth, fluid CGI um, look to something a little, almost a little more rough hewn, a little more, um, feels a little more, uh, you know, hand-drawn almost, which is, uh, even though this is, again, it's all done by, all this is done by computers now. There, are, right. there is no hand-drawn animation anymore. But this this gets, this it creates uh, like an almost a simulation of being hand, hand-drawn, which is interesting. And, and I think audiences are, um, I think audiences are looking for something, again, a little different. And this is, look, I, to bring it, I'm sorry to hop back and forth here, but to bring it back to Barbie, this is one reason why I do think Barbie is, is because it is a movie that feels and looks unique, right? It is not this kind of standard CGI sludge of the Transformers or Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny or any number of other movies, right? Um, the, that movie has a big, bright color palette. It, uh, it, it, it is set designed to within, within an inch of its life. I mean, it is big and pink and uh, looks like a Barbie dream world. Um, and, you know, again, I not not really for me. That's not what I grew up enjoying. But at least, again, at least it looks different, looks interesting, right. it looks uh, vital and vibrant, um, which is something I think, you know, uh, the movies have been missing a little bit. Joined by Sonny Bunch, our movie critic here on The Hugh Hugh Show with Dwayne Patterson. I want to get back to what you said briefly about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is you said this is kind of a reboot. Now, my kids missed the window of when the turtles were a thing, so I never really got immersed into that world. Now, when you say reboot, are they going back and and telling how they became the turtles again? They're like they're going back to square one. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, yeah, I did, did we really need to do? I mean, is is there kids that don't know where the turtles came from? <laughs> Well, I mean, look, I my my kid has no idea. You know, this is a this is a you know introducing again a new generation. It's interesting because I there there have been waves of turtle uh, movies slash products slash cartoons slash whatever, right? So like when I was seven or eight or six or you know whatever, that's when uh, the teen, the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon was out, right? Late late eighties, early nineties. Um, I remember seeing the first the first one, uh, you know, on VHS at home with, uh, my friends. Um, and then, you know, the, that, that cycle runs its course. There's a reboot. There's like a live action reboot with Megan Fox. Remember that one, uh, that was produced by Michael Bay that comes out in the, the late two thousands. Um, and then there was a cartoon, uh, effort to reboot it that didn't really go anywhere. 
uh, in the the early tens. I think it was 2012 or 13, something like that. So you know, it's been it's been 10 years. Uh, I don't know that. Uh, again, I, I it's it's hard for me to say. You know, do kids need that? I don't know if they need it. But uh, again, there is there is basically a, an entire new young generation that has not. Uh, been indoctrinated into the world of teenage. Mutants I mean, I guess, up, so. I guess every Bond movie is technically a reboot, but, but I mean, it just, it just seems like, it, at least with Spider Man, when they did quote the reboots, it's because they changed studios and was bringing it more into the Marvel universe, which is why they had to do the reboot. But it just seems like, okay, can't. Okay, can we just take the turtles and do the new CGI and actually just take them and go somewhere new with them instead of having to go back and tell the same story again? Well, I mean, they they put a they put a slightly different spin on it. You know, yes, the turtles and the use, but things are things are a little different. I mean, I like again, I it, you're you're trying to introduce a new generation of fans to uh, the characters, and they need uh, they need to you know they need to know where they came from. So. Okay, thirty uh, seconds. But, yeah, so, no, but it is it, it, we do have like kind of a Batman's parents in uh, in in Crime Alley sort of thing going on here. Okay, thirty seconds. Tell me everything I need to know about. Talk to me. Uh, talk to me. Uh, new horror film from A twenty four. Very very scary. Uh, not for people who don't like horror movies. Sorry, Hugh. Um, but the uh, but I I liked it a lot. It's very mean. It is a it's a so the very basic premise here is. Kids at parties are playing with a, a ceramic hand that is supposedly the, the hand of a psychic or something um, uh, that allows them to see ghosts that can then inhabit their bodies. And it's Jeez. kind of like a drug. It's like a drug at the parties, and the kids are having lots of fun with it, and their eyes are getting all – their pupils are dilated. It turns out uh, bad things happen when you invite uh, wandering demon spirits into ne- your body. Ne- never play with over. psychics. That's, 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 yeah. that's not usually a good thing to do. Sonny, as always, thank you very much. You can read everything that Sonny writes over at The Bulwark. You can listen to his podcast, Bulwark Goes to Hollywood and Across the Movie Aisle, which you should do. Or you can see what he puts up on the site formerly known as Twitter, at Sonny Bunch. Sonny, thank you very much.